Hello and welcome to Auten Math. Today we're going to talk about properties of quadrilaterals. We have a lot of stuff to talk about, so let's get started. All right, just as a matter of notation, uh, when we talk about parallelogram, shorthand for par parallelogram is going to be this figure here that looks like a rhombus. So this figure here. Uh, means parallelogram. So I have parallelogram A, B, C, D. So when you see this figure, uh, you can also use it shorthand for parallelogram when you're writing your reasons and your statements and when you're taking a look at what the givens are. Okay, so properties of parallelograms. I got five properties we're going to talk about. Uh, we'll go into a proof of some of the properties later in another section. So we're just going to review the properties today. Uh, another section, again, we'll talk about some of the proofs uh, for the parallelograms. All right, so we the first uh, property of a, parallel, a parallelogram is that opposite sides are parallel. Well, that's by definition, all right? So we said uh, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral where opposite sides are going to be parallel. So by definition, number one is true. Number two, in a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. So I've marked up the diagram left and right side of the quadrilateral are congruent of the parallelogram and top and bottom of the figure are also congruent. We also know that the opposite angles are congruent. So I have the red angles in the bottom left corner and the upper right corner that are congruent and the green angles in the upper left and bottom right corner that are going to be congruent. I know that the diagonals bisect each other. So if I draw my diagonal from one uh, corner to the next, uh, I or from one corner to or one vertex to an opposite uh, vertex, I've got my diagonal and those diagonals bisect each other. Now I've indicated that with three lines here and three lines here, <clears throat> and then two circles. And then finally, any pair of consecutive angles are going to be supplementary. So let's think about this for a second. I know that in a quadrilateral, I have two triangles, and those two triangles uh, have sums of angles that equal to 180 degrees each. So we recall that the sum of all the angles in a triangle are equal to 180 degrees. I have two triangles, <clears throat> so my quadrilateral has a, a sum of 360 degrees for all the angles. Well, I can say that two green angles plus two of the red angles are going to be equal then to 360 degrees. And if I divide this all by two, I can say that one green angle plus one red angle equals 180 degrees. So I know that any pair of consecutive angles, I'm going to have a green and a red angle. So I know that consecutive angles are going to be supplementary. All right, let's talk about the properties of rectangles. And by the way, I like to memorize the properties of parallelograms by a number. So I just tell myself properties of parallelograms. I've got five of them. All right, so let's talk about rectangles. Okay, I've got all the properties of a parallelogram, so I have five properties, plus I have two more properties. All the angles are going to be right angles, and the diagonals are going to be congruent. So all the angles I've marked up in blue, they're all right angles, and the two diagonals in red, they're going to be congruent. All right, moving on to kites. We're going to talk about kites before we talk about rhombuses, and I'll show you why in just a second. So uh, in a kite, I have two disjoint pairs of consecutive sides that are congruent. I've got AB and AD that are congruent, and I have BC and DC that are congruent. So two disjoint pairs of consecutive sides congruent. Diagonals are going to be, going to be uh, perpendicular. AC is perpendicular to BD. Then I have two half properties, and they're half properties because they only apply to half of the uh, parts of the figure. So in uh, the first case, <clears throat> I have one diagonal is a perpendicular bisector of the other. So <clears throat> AC is a perpendicular bisector of BD. And I know AC is a perpendicular bisector because, because both C and A are equidistant from the endpoints of BD. They comprise the perpendicular bisector. BD is not the perpendicular bisector of AC, although it is perpendicular to AC. The other half property is one of the diagonals bisects a pair of opposite angles. So the diagonal that is a perpendicular bisector bisects the opposite angles. So angle A or BAD is bisected, and angle BCD is also bisected. And this is a half property because BD does not bisect ABC or ADC. 
Then finally, one pair of opposite angles are going to be congruent. So one pair of opposite angles are congruent. Uh, angle ABC is congruent to CDA. Now we're also going to say that uh, number 5 is also a half property, since only one pair of opposite angles are going to be congruent. So ABC congruent to CDA. Now let's take a look at rhombuses. All right. uh, and actually, let's go back to kites here for a second because I wanted to write down, I've got five properties, right? And then I have three of them that are half. So I've got five, three and a half, okay? So this is how I remember, I've got five properties for parallelograms, uh, two for rectangles, but I have to add the five for the parallelograms because there are two in addition to the five. I've got five for the properties of kites. Uh, three of those are half properties. For a rhombus, <clears throat> I have all the properties of a parallelogram, so I have five. And then I have the full properties of the kites uh, that are half properties. So we had three properties that were half properties from the kites. Uh, one diagonal is a perpendicular bisector of the other. One of the diagonals bisects a pair of opposite angles. And one pair of opposite angles are congruent. So those three properties become full properties. But this property right here is already a property of a parallelogram. So when we say that a rhombus has all the properties of a parallelogram, that one half property is already assumed in that one in that five. So all the properties of a kite become full properties, and two of those are specific to the rhombus. So you can think of this as a plus two here. Um, so the diagonals bisect both of the angles, and both of the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other. Finally, all the sides are going to be congruent and the diagonals divide the rhombus into four congruent right triangles. So all these triangles, these four triangles, are all going to be congruent. I have a side, right angle, side, side, right angle, side, side, right angle, side, side, right angle, side. Um, okay, so I have five uh, properties of the parallelogram plus four that are going to be independent to the rhombus. And two of those are going to be full properties of the uh, kite. Okay, let's talk about the square. I have all the properties of a rectangle and a rhombus, plus I have one more, and the diagonals form four isosceles right triangles. So first I have the properties of a square. I have five from the properties of a parallelogram, plus I had two that were properties of the rectangle. If I'm not mistaken, I have two properties from the rectangle. All right angles, uh, all angles are right angles, and the diagonals are congruent. And then I had four, from the properties of the rhombus. And then finally, I add one more. Uh, the diagonals form four isosceles right triangles. Okay, so this is how I remember. I've got five for the parallelograms. I have five for the kites. I have two for the rectangles. I have four for rhombuses. And I have one for squares. All right, moving on. Properties of an isosceles trapezoid. Well, the legs are congruent by definition. So remember, I have base, uh, the sides, the uh, sides that are congruent. I'm sorry, the sides that are parallel are the bases, and the sides that are not congruent are called the legs. The legs are congruent by definition of an isosceles trapezoid. The bases are parallel by definition of just a trapezoid. The lower base angles, which are the red angles uh, that I mark as X, are going to be congruent, and the upper base angles are congruent as well. The green angles. The diagonals are going to be congruent, and any lower base angle is going to be supplementary to any upper base angle. So we go back again to our discussion about uh, the sum of all of the angles in a polygon that is a quadrilateral. We know it's 360 degrees. And again, in a trapezoid, I have the two base angles congruent and the two, two lower base angles congruent and the two upper base angles that are congruent. So I know those four <clears throat> angles comprise 360 degrees. I have two red, two green that equal 360 degrees. So I know one green plus one red is equal to 180 degrees. So green and red are going to be uh, supplementary to each other.